back out at the property today. I am bound and determined to get this field mowed. I got something new behind me. Yeah, so the 4720 is still in the shop. I added it up last night. Uh, four out of the last six weeks, it's been in the shop and counting. Don't have it back yet. I just had to go buy a new tractor to get the job done. So we're gonna do a field test out here with it today. It's an M7060, has a John Deere MX-8 mower behind it. Now I hope we're not breaking any laws because it came with this John Deere MX-8 mower. I'm gonna give you a little uh, look at this mower configuration. It's a little unique. But then after all that, we are gonna put it for sale on the website, goodworkstractors.com. Don't forget, we ship all over the country if you are interested. This one came from New York, only about 58 hours. As always, we are sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers, made in America. Wheel spacer for your tractors, your UTVs, even for your trucks. If you need to add some stability to your tractor, if you're feeling kind of tippy, side to side, Bora Wheel Spacers can make a big difference. And it'd be much appreciated if you give us a thumbs up on the video, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more tractor videos. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, maybe something for the three-point hitch or the front-end loader, check out goodworkstractors.com. Just a really quick overview of this tractor. The M series is gonna be pretty similar to the John Deere 5 series. So you're above the compact level into the utility level of tractors. The 7060 is actually the M60 series. So there's gonna be an M6060, an M7060. So this is the 70 horsepower variant. Four wheel drive, you're gonna have a front end loader. LA1154 front end loader. The 1154 is actually representative of the max kilograms that this will lift. So you can translate that into pounds if you want. A big old skid steer quick attach uh, bucket on it the previous owner did weld on a chain hook and this is going to have a factory cab what do they call this i think it's the ultra grand cab and it's going to have air conditioning heat radio you know all your bells and whistles in there this one has a mechanical seat i know that there's an air ride upgrade You'll see the big old ag tires that are on here. Now, my understanding is these are uh, cast plates on the center hubs. That's gonna add a lot of additional ballast weight there. You will see that the center plates are bolted on. And so that is a little mental note there for you. It's called an eight position hub. So you can completely flip that center plate on the inside and the outside, rotate it around 180 degrees, put it on this side to that side. Essentially, it's gonna give you eight different widths that you can have on your tractor. So on the back side of the tractor, you've got a category one slash category two three-point hitch you do have one rear remote you can see the uh, the hydraulic lift for the mower is plugged into that right now uh, 540 rpm rear pto it does look like this is equipped with the uh, economy 540 pto so you can run your engine at a lower rpm and still maintain the right um, PTO speed and you can basically save some fuel that way. So this is a John Deere MX-8 mower. It looks to be a little bit older than the tractor itself. It's going to be a multi-spindle mower. You're going to see this red cylinder. It looks like it got repainted. I can see some of the overspray onto the hoses, um, but that's going to give you an ability to raise and lower the trailing wheels. And then the front end here, it looks it looks like anyways that they welded these plates on afterwards uh, to connect to the lower links of the three-point hitch. And so you can raise the front of this mower with your three-point hitch control and you can raise the rear of it by using the hydraulic control. So just a real quick look at the setup that we're running. A pretty unique machine. I was really excited to get it in. Well, in particular, I need to get something out here to mow and finish up this field. We have other projects to do. I do have a 10-foot batwing mower, but right now we're going to test this out, stick with it. It's already set up. It's already, I've done a little test strip with it, so we're, we know it works. <laughs> so let's go finish up mowing this field.
few final thoughts. We got about three, maybe it's four, I really don't know. Uh, whatever we got, three or four acres mowed in about an hour and a half. Still have about the same amount, maybe a little bit more to do on this side of the field. Probably come back this weekend and finish that up. Boy, am I thankful to have a cab. I mean, with this heat, it's 88 degrees out here right now, but between that and all the bugs and just allergies, holy cow, it is fantastic to have a cab. I really appreciate that. We were going pretty much oh i don't know 2.8 to 3.8 miles an hour it kind of varied uh there were certain areas that were thinner certain areas that were thicker just watching the speed watching the rpms and we kind of bounced between third and fourth gear and low range so this is a, a high low range and then six speed so you have a, a two by six or a 12 speed and then you have uh, the handle to go forward or reverse it's a hydraulic shuttle or a power reverser in the john deere world Easy to use, easy to operate. The most impressive thing was that I was watching that engine needle, you know, that temperature gauge, and it did not move. I had, uh, I was, well, I was kind of worried. You know, I had the air conditioning on three. There was four levels, one, two, three, and four, and it was hot. So I had it cranking pretty good, and I was getting ready to turn it down as soon as I would start to see that creep up. But it never did. It held steady. To me, that's a big difference, and a lot of you guys pointed that out in a previous video. The difference between a gear drive machine and a hydro machine, it's just gonna generate a lot more heat, and this is kind of proof of that. Um, how much cooler this stayed compared to those hydro machines and relatively similar horsepower. So first impressions of the M7060, I really like it. I had my eyes on an M4D071, which is uh, the newest version of that. So something that I found kind of interesting about this tractor here and the M4 as well is that all of the air ducts or the heat ducts are all in the steering column. There's nothing that's up high like I'm used to on uh, the John Deere tractors. Everything is right down kind of by your knees in this area. I don't know how that'll work in the winter time. I'm sure a lot of you guys have these tractors that are out there as far as defrosting, keeping the, you know, the fog and everything else off if you're in the cold temperatures in the winter. In the summer, I think it was just fine because a lot of that air is just blowing right at your core and that works just fine, but I'm just curious how that would work in the winter time. Anyway, so uh, first impressions, I liked it, you know, but when you're not overheating, it's, you know, a pretty good feeling. So I'm, I'm excited to get back in it, finish mowing this field. We'll see, I just got an MX-6000 in as well that I may hook up the bat wing to that and mow the other field over there just to kind of have a comparison. That is a hydro machine, a little bit smaller too. So if you want to see that video with the MX-6000, make sure you hit that subscribe button and get notified of when we have that video published. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you want something for your tractor, check out goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country. I do appreciate you taking the time to stop by and until next time, please stay safe and we'll see you soon.